Well, hi, friends. Um, again, I wanted to go some more with that, but okay, so here's a, another part to it. Um, I thought it was fascinating in religion. Okay, the acceptance of Christianity by the British nation under good King Lucius. Isn't there a Christmas song like good you know, St. Lucius. I'm going to look. I think it's the same one. I always thought of that as a Scandinavian name. But um, the Scandinavians and the British were kind of, um, I'll have to show you. I won't say it here because I don't want to offend anyone. But when I get when I get the book again, I'm going to read to you how they're connected. But anyway, um, good, um, the acceptance of Christianity by the British nation under good King Lucius, L-U-C-I-U-S. And in parentheses, they spell his name, L-L-E-I-V-E-R-O, or L-L-E-U-F-E-R. Um, then the last name, M-A-W-R. So, and that's about 80, 170. It goes way back. Um, the reason I'm giving you those details, because some of you like to research things and look for yourself and can get different information and see if this is really true, if it's written up or whatever. So Britain was the first of all nations. This is page 18. Um, British Britain was the first of all nations to accept Christianity and as its national re religion. Few people realize that this is why the British king is called our most religious king. And there remained for the French king the title of the most Christian king and for the Spanish most Catholic king. Um, we have too much forgotten our great inheritance, which was so firmly defended by our Brit British archbishop and bishops in the days of St. Augustine. How many Britons realize that the superior dignity and antiquity of our national church has been decided by church councils. Hmm. I think it still is a lot. It was never disputed till 1409 when for political purposes it was called in question by the ambassadors of France and Spain and then four times our claim was asserted at the councils of Pisa, P-I-S-A in 1409. Constance in 1417, Siena, S I E N N A, in 1424, and Basel, B A S L E, in 1434. Hmm. It was there contended that the churches of France and Spain must yield in points of antiquity and precedence to that of Britain as the later church was founded by Joseph of Arimathea. Do you know who Joseph of Arimathea is? He is the one that um, um, gave Jesus Christ, provided a place for Jesus Christ's burial. So, And he was also um, uh, most likely Mary's uncle, you know, Mary, Mary, Martha, all of, you know, their uncle. And so... I mean, comment if you want and you have whatever information you have, go ahead, comment. Um, and other people can see, get more details if you want to do that. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, in, okay. Okay, Siena. Siena in 1424 and Basel in 1434. It was there contended that the churches of France and Spain must yield its points of antiquity and precedence to that of Britain, as the later church was founded by Joseph of Arimathea immediately after the Passion of Christ. Okay, so there is a rare quarto giving the pleadings at the Council of Constance. At Pisa in 1409, the English delegates were Robert Hellam, Bishop of Salisbury, Henry Chichel, Archbishop. So uh, I think that's just interesting. Um, and you're probably going, why am I on this page? Okay, so it says that Henry Chichel of Canterbury in 1414 and Thomas Chilledon, C-H-I-L-L-E-D-E-N, prior of Christ Church Canterbury, Hellam was the leader. So he was at Siena in 1424. With him were was 
with him there was Nicholas Bubwith, Bishop of Bath and Wells, Bishop of Bath and Wells, whose chantry is in the grave there, and the Bishop of St. David's Cardinal, Befford. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm saying this stuff, but it's not our regular language. And all these places, what's well, not mine? So, I mean, you know, we don't, ha I, I'm, don't usually refer to people as bishops of Bishop of Bath and Wells. And so it's, it's history though, isn't it? It's not only religion, it's history. So then Bishop of Winchester joined them later. He had been Dean of Wells. Evidently the authorities at Wells, though there were constant friction, friction between Christians, that doesn't happen today, does it? <laughs> between the abbots of Glastonbury and the bishop, bishops of Bath and Wells believed in the claims of Glastonbury then. Nicholas Frome, abbot of Glastonbury, Frome, from F-R-O-M-E, would be their spelling, right? You so I go, huh, is it Frome or from? Probably from. Abbot of Glastonbury was actually one of the English envoys at Basel in 1434. The Spanish church claimed to have been founded by St. James. The French by Dionysius, D-I-O-N-Y-S-I-U-S, -I -I the Aeropagite, A-R-E-O-P-A-G-I-T-E, -E. hence uh, St. Denis. The learned Archbishop Usher, recording the claims put forth by the English church at these councils, specifically says that St. Joseph's burial at Glastonbury and the donation of the 12 hides by King. <laughs> really get into details that they see how much is in history. Um, a donation of 12 hides by King Avergus, A R B I R A G U S. But you haven't heard of that king. To him was the base of the claims. There are two different dates claimed for the founding of Glastonbury Church 8037 and 8063. Probably both dates accentuate some special event. I will give one or two reasons for the early date. Give us the wise, the earliest Christian historian, A.D. 425 through 512, distinctly says that the light of Christ shone here in the last year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar. Now, most of we, we've heard of him. That is in A.D. 37. This falls with the claim recorded above, which gave precedence to British, British bishops at the church councils on the ground that Britain was converted immediately after the Passion of Christ. It fits in also with the statements of Fuller and Polydor, Virgil, already recorded. Now, I have a lot of references here, but I wanted to get to something else. What's the time? Okay, I wanted to show this picture. I don't know if you can see it. Let me get up here and see what it... So they show some pictures. That is Mary's Chapel, the north door at St. Mary's Chapel. Um, so St. Paul probably lived with the British royal family in exile and from which he was pub probably martyred is now a church dedicated to St. P-U-D-E-N-T-I-N-A, T-A-N-A. Puditania, one of the martyred daughters of Pudens and Claudia. Pudens died martyred A.D. 96, and Claudia, who survived him one year, is said to have given the Titulus to be a home for the faithful afterwards. Hmm. Between A.D. 100 and 109, to become a Christian church. This, as I shall, this as I shall show, is later than the date ascribed to the founding of St. Joseph Armathia Waddle Church of Glastonbury. So it is not too much to say that the site of St. Mary's Glastonbury is the site of the earliest known above ground church in the world. Above ground. So have you ever been to an underground church? Hmm. Above ground. So, <laughs> I mean, I know they had churches underground, but I didn't you know, I mean, like, kind of like the underground people are hiding that they're go to church, or whatever. But this is saying that there were churches built underground. So 
It is very interesting to note how the ancient British royal family was intimately connected with the earliest Apollostic church, both in exile at Rome and in Britain. Well, you know, people were hiding in Rome. They were being tortured. So where they fostered it. And there is a most interesting relic of the friendship of St. Paul and the Carrick. I really apologize for <laughs> the way I'm spelling these words. Carrick to cuss family, C-A-R-A-C-T-A-C-U-S family, in the existence of contemporary portraits of St. Paul and Linus engraved in two glass petrate, petrate, I'm sorry, in the Vatican Museum, depicted in Sir Wake Bayless, excuse me, Rex Regum, in the same museum and the same book. On page 73 through 75, there are contemporary por portraits engraved on glass medallions with lines filled in with gold. St. John Damas, St. Peter and St. Paul, St. Peter and St. So they have a lot of them. Um, and they don't have pictures here. But there was something I really wanted to get to, and I saw it, and I went, this is really neat. I just find it fascinating how... how religion started and how we ended up where we are now. I just find that so fascinating in that people were quite smart in religion back then, you know. Um, and sometimes we forget that like the, you know, uh, St. Nicholas was a real person. And maybe around Christmas we'll really show you St. Nicholas. And people are like, no, oh. but yes, he was. And he did give. And, um, so I don't find it offensive that um, that somehow St. Nicholas has um, been a part of a holiday of giving. I'm, I'm fine with it. And um, anyway, I'm real, I think it's a nice time when the weather is so cold in some places that we have a time to have hearth and warmth and, and um, celebrate even, you know, Thanksgiving. Um, it's harvest time. So I don't so much celebrate Halloween, but I do celebrate harvest time and thankful for crops and everything. And I call that a Thanksgiving. And um, it may have started with a lot of people in different ways. And, but that's my way I do it. And some of you or us or you have friends or family that is actually um your ancestors that are from that. And you know, in a lot of countries, they don't even celebrate that. So have a great day. And I hope this was helpful. See ya. What did you do? Uh, TikTok?